thanks for having me, Catherine. Catherine sent me an email and said, we'd like you to come and talk. And I said, should we meet? And she said, no. No, oh, you're, you're invited. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was the easiest. Uh, it's an honor to be here today. I am uh, not usually in front of such brilliant people, so it's a little intimidating for me. I am a chef of 36 years, and I now work around North America uh, building farm to school models mostly. Um, and I work in sustainable food in general. And I'm going to talk to you about the project I'm on and share with you some of my ideas on how to move a system. So I'll just set a little context for that, then we'll jump into the project. And I can't take any questions, so <laughs> good for me. Uh, I think that'd be hard for me, people. So I think that the solution often in a system's change is right in front of people, and they just can't see it. I think that it's helpful to, and I'm going to color all this in, I think it's helpful to walk in forgiveness. Um, I think that it's about people. So a lot of us are really smart, and we come up with these ideas, you know, like we need a food hub, or we need new food companies that this brilliant man just talked about. People are inventing them, and we need all these things. And then people go and build those things. And it's probably true, we, we need uh, a, a lot of that. And it starts with uh, talking to people and staying engaged with people. So I also think it's helpful to walk in some kind of context that's bigger than yourself. I think it's helpful to have a project bigger than yourself. And so mine is I'm going to help change our food system in America to one that works for everyone and everything. Because I think our food system... Um, it is built on a house of cards, meaning it's built on the overuse of water and oil. I also think it's helpful to walk in a, a pure intention of some kind that's bigger than you. So mine is, one of mine is I seek truth. That's too long of a conversation to have today. So another one that I walk in is I'm dreaming of a world that works for everyone, meaning everyone has food, water, medicine, peace education, and women are treated right, right? Now, as a chef from Chicago, I don't know how to impact any of that at all. I don't know how to get people clean water. No idea, right? But I walk in that so that the project that I've chosen, which is to help contribute to a food system that works for everyone, it helps keep me sane. So when I hit a speed bump, I, I go back to what I'm really about, and I can stay in my heart, right? So I'm going to take you, uh, so I think food systems are going to localize. I have no idea how the investment guys and all the manufacturers are going to figure that out, but they're all really smart, right? So food systems end up needing to localize. <coughs> You're some of the cats that are going to figure that out. I am working in, on a project in, in Hawaii. And I'm going to walk you through what I just talked about contextually in a real project. So Hawaii calls me, and they says, will you say, will you build a farm school model in one of our 256 public schools? And I say, yes, I will. And we will be under your current budget, and I need no more money, and I need no more time. So I need no more labor. And they said, well, you haven't been here yet. I know, but that's my promise to you. Whoever hires me. I tell them the money and the time is in the system, you just can't see it. So I go and I first have to build a, um, a baseline. And I start by talking to people. And I talk to the kids first, the customers. What's going on? What's working and not working about school food? They tell me. Then I talk to the lunch ladies. In this case, it's seven women that all went to this school. Their kids went to this school. Their grandkids are in this school. Ladies, what's working and not working? They tell me. I'll pause now. One of the things that's not working is that they're watching kids, their kids, their grandkids, throw their food away, right? Because it's almost all processed food. And so this is painful for them. So when you talk to people, you can uncover some of this pain. I'm not a shrink. But I ask them, could we get over that and try something new if I help you? And they almost always say yes. Hence, the forgiveness work is helpful. So I don't walk in saying, I know what you need, everybody. We talk to vendors and farmers. What's the kitchen equipment like? Do you need more equipment? We're still building baseline. 
right? We have to make sure we're compliant with the USDA. Are we now? Is it a clean kitchen, profit and loss union? We discovered in last winter semester they lost 95K. Hawaii school district loses 27 million a year. Labor's high. Mainland food is expensive. And so they're losing a ton of money. This isn't a surprise. Uh, there are 20% local at all the big island schools use local milk. So they're really at a point and a half veg, money spent on food, 18% milk. We're building the baseline still, right? Processed food, if we add into this number, flour, sugar, oil, rice, pasta, all the things that you have to buy processed, this is at 85%. That's industry average. So the chart wells, Aramark, we said XO were in the room, they would all say, yeah, we run it at 85% processed food. Milk waste, we buy some skills, we start weighing waste. And we're flowing through 320 half pints of milk a day in one school. That's 25k a year in one school. Most people aren't measuring waste on a scale. That's why I can say wherever I go, even though I've never been there, any school, I can say I can do this in your budget. We can serve local scratch cooked food in budget with no more labor. So then we create a menu. Greg doesn't create the menu. Wherever I go, the lunch ladies and the kids create the menu. And we build it and we sample it to the kids. We don't assume that this is going to work. Thank you. We um, sample, it took us four tries on the pizza. Kid, is this what you mean about pizza? Right? Because we're staying in front of the customer, talking to people. And then we teach the ladies teamwork. The other interesting thing, Mrs. Obama missed this, and almost everybody misses this, is that there's no teamwork in these kitchens. So to all of you, and unless you're kitchen people, you see a bunch of cooks in the kitchen, and they're working with food, and there's kitchen equipment, and food comes out. So it would be natural to think in this system that you're looking at, there's teamwork. And there's completely not teamwork in almost any institutional kitchen in America. Because it's all processed food, so we've industrialized our food system, and everything's unitized. And so the frozen chicken finger lady does frozen chicken fingers, and the canned pineapple lady is opening up the Hawaiian canned pineapple, and the steamed frozen broccoli lady is doing that, and no one's working as a team. So we're going to start scratch cooking. You know, in this case, it's 500 uh, lunches a day. With no more labor, we have to teach teamwork. So this is the part about what I meant by the solutions in front of you, but it's hard to know unless you ask lots of questions and observe that there's not teamwork happening in the kitchen that you're standing in, or whatever system you're deciding to move with one that works for everyone. So then we, um, we make some fabulous food, right? And we're tracking data, right? Everyone's into data. And we save them, and we lose 35K instead of last year's baseline at the same time, we lost 72K. So we cut loss in half in three months. We are we over double local purchasing. We're way into fresh food, right, 86%. And I want you to get that this is in a kitchen with no cooks in the kitchen. Nobody went to chef school. Nobody worked at a hotel. Nobody worked at a restaurant. These are housewives that started out driving the van. Then they delivered some mail. Then they were the dishwasher. Now they're the baker. Right now they're the cook. So this system change is happening in a non-cook kitchen, right? But and we flipped a switch and did that. So uh, milk waste we cut by a third, and we're still working on that. And we have happy cooks that work in teams now. So I um, I guess I want to invite all of you brilliant people. You have such an opportunity to um, help move our food system, if any of you want to go play that game, to a more sustainable one. And, and, and I think that it's possible to do that, you know, for sure. And what this gentleman, uh, Alex, has talked about in the manufactured food arena or any arena, but it just takes a little bit of thinking, right? And what, what we do when we build things, when we built that assessment, is I skipped a little bit, is I made sure nobody left the table until they agreed that that's where we're starting from. This is a mistake people make in systems change work, and you can learn about this from Steve Saffron, the three laws of performance, Sandy's another you know, big fan of mine at MIT. So we, we get a few data points on, on assessment, and we're like, we're ready to go make the change, right? The other thing that we do is we build a clear vision with the whole system in the room. So I'm going to be doing more visioning work in Hawaii Wednesday, and in the room will be head of procurement for the state, head of procurement for DOE, the 
Department of Agriculture chairman, assistant superintendent, all kinds of people, foundations, health and human services, boss. So, and then what we're going to do once that vision is clear, because it wasn't clear when they hired me, so I made this happen, right, through the grace of God. And now we're all coming back to the table three and a half months in and saying, what's it look like, everybody? It's not great vision. I'm a samurai chef. I'm out of here, right? This is your vision for your state that brings in 85% of your food, right? That serves kids all processed food. It's possible to do this. And then once we create that vision, I'm going to continually put that vision in front of people. I'm going to put up, that's where we started. Everybody remember where we started. And then that's where we're going. Don't forget, that's where we're going. We all agreed upon that. Maybe we have to tweak that. But to me, people talk about like tweaking systems. It's so cute. You know, it's, to me, it's about building mutations but not from this like smart brain mutation, but from the people. Because in this case, the kids and the lunch ladies told me what to do. And the last thing is it's really helpful to use future-based language, and I'm not your dad. You're probably happy about that. Um, <laughs> but these words, I request, I commit, I promise, I declare, I invite, these are words I'm not sure if they're being taught in this fancy school or wherever you hang out. But without using future-based language, it's all pretend to me. It's all like, I'm going to try really hard, and I'll get back to you. And so I demand from my staff the use of what are you doing and when's it going to be done. I, I have Heidi sitting here, a lovely Heidi, who's so brilliant. She helps keep my act together. And you know she keeps her word like all the time. And you don't have to keep your word if you don't use future-based language. If you don't declare, promise, request, invite, then, then you don't have to keep your word. You can like, live this wish while you like. And a lot of you are so smart, you know, it's easy to figure out how to, you know, weasel through the cracks. So our food system is built on a house of cards. And so I invite you to consider helping it.